Humans have always used animals to cultivate their fields and improve the fertility of their soils. It is only in the last century that mechanization has widely replaced the functions previously occupied by animals. This isn't without issues. Half of the Earth's arable land has been lost in the past 50 years due to excessive tillage, the use of chemical amendments, and the extraction of all organic matter at harvest. What if the traditional way of using animals was less damaging to the soil? Many regenerative farmers are already using livestock to manage their fields, but we found very little data to confirm that grazing animals were beneficial to soils. So we designed a two-year scientific experiment that compares the soil quality and cover crop growth in two soil management systems, one using pig grazing and the other using tractor tillage. We first outlined four different fields in the planting of cover crop. Each section has two strips. On one side, picked randomly, we apply the grazing system. On the other side, the tillage system. Two pigs are first introduced in the grazing strips. They will rotate through six grazing plots. On the other side, a tractor is used. Pigs are left to graze until 70% of the above ground vegetation is consumed. At that point, a summer mix of cover crop is broadcasted. Pigs are left to trample the seeds for one day only before being moved onto the next plot. When the pigs are halfway done on their side of the field, the tillage plots are mowed, tilled and seeded by a tractor. By the time the pigs arrive at the end, the summer cover crop is ready to be grazed again. Pigs are sent back for a second rotation. Fall rye and vetch are used as winter cover crop. Once again, the tractor is mowing, tilling, and seeding its side of the field. After the pigs finish their second rotation, they are removed from the experiment. The cover crop is left undisturbed until the spring, when we will take soil samples. As a last step, we planted corn and squash in the plots to evaluate crop production. So this is the first day uh, that we've introduced our pigs to the research plot. This was a field of conventional potatoes for about 25 years, and then it hasn't been used in five years. And it was completely bare and very, very compacted. And last year, a grass started growing and we got rid of that. We plowed that under. And 50 days ago, we planted a forage crop for them that's a mix of field peas, oats, tillage radish and a little bit of clover and they're doing really really well. There's two pigs per plot. They're about a hundred pounds each right now. They're just a little under six months old. They eat the top of all the plants and then they start uprooting them and then they start proceeding to mulch the plants. And when you look around and about 20, 30% of the ground cover still remains and before they start cratering and making holes and destroying the land, uh, we move them to the next plot, move them to the next plot, keep going like this. So that rotation obviously is very intensive, giving them enough time to eat the whole entire thing but not to get bored enough that they start digging holes and, and making a mess of the place. Each plot is 1,200 square feet. If the plots are too small, the pigs will disturb the soil too quickly. If they're too large, they won't graze evenly. There's no formula to determine the perfect area of your grazing plot. It depends on the density of forage, the amount of animals, and the type of soil that you have. So this is the before and after. As you can see, this is extremely dense cover crop, uh, probably the most dense we've had in quite a while because we had, we were lucky enough to have good rains in the spring. So the spring cover crop that they're currently grazing is a mix of 50% peas, 30% oats, and the rest is Ladino clover. Each one of those species were chosen for their palatability. Pigs love eating them. They produce lots of protein, but also these cover crops were selected for their impacts on soil. Tillage radishes create large tap roots that break compacted soils. Ladino clover and field peas can fix atmospheric nitrogen to deposit it back into the soil. And fall rye can compete aggressively with weeds. It is important to choose the cover crop that will work best for your soil type and objectives. 
when the soil is starting to get disturbed on the surface, that's when I'll move them to a new plot. There's no like specific amount of days. It's true observation, it's depending on the weather. If it rains, it softens the soil and therefore they're able to dig a lot faster, eat a lot faster. When it's very hot, they just lay all day. And so the time at which they graze is very limited. The other thing that's happening is that the pigs are getting bigger. So their destroying eating power increases, uh, but the cover crop is also getting tougher. 24 hours before I move the pigs out of a plot, I will reseed a summer for cover crop. The seeds that are put in here are trampled by the pigs. The pigs try to get every single last seed and they don't do a, such a great job out of it, but they end up trampling and putting the seed at a place in the soil where the seed and soil contact is very good. So because some of the seeds get eaten in the process, we increase the seeding rate by 45% in the grazing plots. During the experiment, they're living in small shelters made for two uh, that can be easily moved uh, with one or two people. There's handles on one side, there's wheels on the other side. So because this is a soil experiment, I can't have wallows of water everywhere and I can't have them knock over their water. So they're drinking out of a 25 gallon barrel that has a three quarter inch nipple on it. In the farming context, you would obviously manage more than two pigs at once and you would need a larger shelter. Pigs will rub onto their shelter, so it must be very sturdy and the roof should be out of reach. Portable shelters made of metal are recommended. Their fence, they're set for the season, they remain there for the duration of the experiment. Some semi-permanent lines uh, that are electrified all the way to the end and then all I have to do when I move them is move those handles here. I don't even have to turn off the electrical system. These handles have a spring so that when I come to hook it again, there is tension. The tension is very, very important. If something is loose, they'll just bolt through it. But if it's tight, it'll really dig into their skin and they'll really get a shock and, and they won't, they'll be discouraged from escaping and going anywhere. Using that gate system, the pigs will rotate through the six plots twice. The tractor will also mow and till its side two times, and when that's all done, summer will be over. Right now, we're at the end of the experiment. We've moved the pigs out. We can see all of this oat has been replanted by the pigs. Um, and they do a really good job. I don't see how I could do a better job with the tractor. Uh, it's very uniform, it's, it, the coverage is very, very nice. Um, and then you can see that the soil is very much friable. It still has a lot of air, it has a lot of structure, um, it has quite a few worms. These crop residues cover most of the ground. So that means that the soil is never bare and the oats are just regrowing through that crop residues. All of this uh, straw, this oat straw, is, is giving an extra protection to the soil throughout the winter. Another thing that is happening is that there's some of the previous cover crop that is staying, that is staying in the ground um, and will slowly, slowly rot through the winter and create these channels that will help um, water infiltrate in the spring. So all these things are providing perfect habitat for life in the soil instead of just being this dead hard pan. We're actually going to be building up some structure um, by adding this organic matter without sacrificing um, the integrity of the soil. This is the control. We planted this cover the same day that we planted uh, the third plot here. This cover crop is not doing extremely well and it's because it's very, very difficult to establish a cover crop in the middle of August uh, during a drought when it's really, really hot. So this is an example here of what happens to your soil when you leave the pigs for too long. So the pigs start digging holes. Um, and that's a behavior called cratering. The deeper soil is moist and cool, so they dig and they lay in it, and then it makes these pools that, in, in clay soils like we have, um, gets really, really compacted. And you can see that this soil 
uh, has no more structure. It's completely hard pan. You can see it from the cracks in the clay as it's drying. Uh, and I'm gonna dig to show you what it looks like inside. Obviously, you can imagine that water drains very, very slowly through here. Uh, it's completely anaerobic through the winter. Um, the other thing that you can see is the glaying uh, and the iron oxidization. So you can see both uh, some, some blue gray strikes, which are a, a clear sign of, of soil that has been under anoxic condition, low oxygen or no oxygen at all. Every spring, if you want to test your management, you're looking at that um, and trying to minimize the glaying and the mottling in your soil. We return to the experimental plots in the spring to visually assess cover crop and weed coverage. We use the sampling frame to estimate the coverage percentage of both cover crop and weed. We took five random samples per plot and found that the average cover crop coverage was superior in the grazing strips. On the contrary, weed coverage was lesser in the grazing strips and higher where tractor tillage had been used. This soil was under grass for several years, so the seed bank is extremely large. And so at the beginning of the season, the wheat pressure was the same in both plots, but the pigs have successfully uprooted and eaten and destroyed all of the grass in the top few inches. They're not bringing up uh, more seeds from, from down below. Whereas the tillage has uh, mixed the deeper layers of soil back into the surface where the seeds have perfect conditions for germinating again. We also noticed more crusting and cracking caused by stagnant water over the winter in the tillage system. To understand what was happening underground, we selected a series of tests or indicators to measure the soil's physical, chemical and biological properties. We took five soil samples in each of the 48 plots of the experiment. We compare the soil compaction by measuring penetration resistance, bulk density, and aggregate stability. It was found that the penetration resistance at the 15 to 30 centimeters depth on the side managed by the tractor was significantly higher. Interestingly, this is the depth where the plow pan is usually found, where the tiller tines end, therefore creating a layer of compaction. We also looked at earthworm abundance, an indication of biological soil health. More worms were found in the grazing system. At the end of the growing season, we also evaluated the vegetables planted in the field. We found that in the plots grazed by pigs the previous year, corn yields were nearly double what we found in the tillage plots. Corn is a big user of nitrogen, so this can be attributed at least in part to the manure left behind by the pigs. Overall, according to the selected physical, chemical, and biological indicators, we can say that using pigs has positive impacts on the soil and consequently crop development. These findings were encouraging, considering that they were recorded after a single season of grazing. Changing soil properties takes a very long time. At least a hundred years is required to form an inch of topsoil, and that is when conditions are optimal. This grazing system could obviously be scaled up and used by farmers. When managed carefully, animals have the power to restore depleted soils, fight erosion and capture carbon while providing healthy proteins to communities.